I did not save hundreds of thousands of dollars within six months or one year. It actually took me two years to save my first $10,000. It was a lot of effort to save that amount and also to understand that it was okay to take my time to do it. In this video, I'll be sharing with you seven of the biggest lessons that I learned on how to save money when it's actually hard to do it. And before we begin, I really want to emphasize the point I'm about to make because it can cause you a lot of frustration, time and energy if you don't understand this properly. Your situation is different than the rest. You need to understand that in personal finance, there is no right or wrong. Your situation, where you are right now, will and always will be different than anybody else. From your friends, your co-worker, your family, even to people that you see online, everyone is different. Okay, yeah, you cannot compare to Elon Musk because, of course, there's a difference between you and him. But even then, their situation will never apply to you and it will be different. So if you're like me, you probably consume countless hours of your favorite personal finance creators. You watch the latest news and videos where they give you advice on how to save your money, where to spend and where not to spend your money. And you follow through, or well, most of the times because sometimes it's just awful advice. What I just said actually applies for everything in life, not just personal finance. Let's take dropshipping for example. A while ago I saw a challenge from Jordan Welsh, where he guaranteed that I'd be able to make $1,000 by dropshipping in just a week. I got extremely hyped, because $1,000 is a lot of money, especially in 7 days. So I've subscribed to his portal and got to work. I spent approximately 2 whole days trying to set up everything like 12 hours each day, following piece by piece the advice he gave, and still, I failed to make one dollar. I totally fell for the trap I got sold that, after following Jordan Welch's advice, I would be able to make one thousand dollars online in just a week. And that's just an example. It's crucial to understand that personal finance is, well, just personal, and your situation differs from everyone else. There are circumstances like income, your expenses, your savings, and even the location where you're located can affect that. But even factors that you put in like your time available, your location, and how much your rent is, is different than someone else's. My dropshipping experiment failed for example because of me not being able to allow credit cards among other things because of living in Europe and not in the United States. Anyway, comparing yourself to other people it's never beneficial for you or for anyone else. So instead of just looking to what someone has online, just compare to where you were one year ago. It's not all about savings. Enjoy your life. Picture this. Friday afternoon. You're at work and your co-workers are talking about their plans for the weekend. Jim is going out with Pam. Angela is going to go for drinks with Dwight. And you have no plans. Then all of a sudden, Andy calls and asks if you have plans for the evening. To which you reply that you are going to stay home. He asks if you feel okay because it's Friday night and you don't want to go out for dinner with the guys. You look at your bank account and you have enough money to do it. However, you're not yet where you want to be financially speaking. You are just so about to cross the $10,000 mark you've been sure saving for the past year. So you say no. Yes and decide to stay in, to reach your goal. A few days later you find out that Michael is going to be a dad and you actually get offended because he posted it online before he even told you. That same day you reach your goal of $10,000, the goal you worked so hard for. However, you don't feel as happy and celebratory as you thought you would because you would have rather be there when Michael announced he would be a father. The point I'm trying to make is that it's not all about money, that you just need to go out and enjoy your life. While saving money is important, it's equally important to go out and have fun. Just try to find the right balance between spending money and having fun. Because your money is not granted and the only thing it is granted is your today, your present. So tomorrow you might not be here. I'm of the thought that one should be able to do whatever they want with their time, money. You just, just enjoy it. If your goal is to save money and have as much money as you possibly can on your bank account, just be my guest. But my question to you is, what are you saving for? You only have one life and you should live it because the day we die, because we all die, 
No one will remember how much money you had saved. Unless you're Elon Musk, everyone remembers how much money he had saved. But if you're not Elon Musk, then, which is probably the case, then you should just go out and not be thinking about saving five dollars here or there when you could instead be going out for the movies with a friend or going out for a drink with your partner. This takes me to my next point, which is money comes and goes. This concept of money comes and goes, it's not really just a sentence, but it's more a philosophy. Understanding that money comes and goes is about recognizing that our financial situation is not static. One might be thriving financially today, enjoying a well-paid job or a successful business, having investments and happy. However, economic shifts happen and what you have today may not be there tomorrow. You can lose your job, your business can go under, or even the COVID can happen. And this is the money goes part of the equation. However, when we're struggling financially, the part of money comes actually helps us to get through this difficult moment, the difficult situation, and will enable us to have a positive outlook for the future. It's essential to recognize and plan for the future in that sense, because money will eventually come. You just need to get your mindset right to do it. And understanding that money comes to go doesn't mean that you need to be reckless about your money just because, oh, money will come, money goes. It's more about being conscious of what you do with your money, how you think about money, and how you get your money, even. It's about recognizing that while it's essential to plan for the future, it's also essential to enjoy the present and be here and money will come and go, so you might as well make the worst and the best of it. So the next time you, one of your friends asks you, hey, you wanna go out for dinner, don't postpone it because you're just close to your $10,000. If it's not this month, it will be next month and then you will save that money you will reach there because money comes and goes. Celebrate milestones. When it comes to saving money, celebrating milestones is essential. Whether it's 1,000, when it's 5,000 or it's 10,000. Just celebrate each step of the process. This can make it more fun to actually save. Think about it like a road trip. You wouldn't expect to drive all across the road without stopping along the way to take a look at the view, stretch your legs or simply appreciate how far you've come. The same principle applies to saving. Every time you hit a milestone, just celebrate. Whether it's $500, whether it's $1,000, just go out and celebrate it. And I don't mean just go out and spend the whole money you just saved. It's more like have a celebratory dance on your kitchen or, I don't know, treat yourself on the movies night, something that marks that milestone and makes you happy and makes you want to save for the next one. For the next, whether it's you start at 500, then the 1000 and so on. This not only gives you a sense of achievement, but it also helps you and keeps you motivated to try and reach the next milestone. It reminds you that your efforts are actually paying off and that you are on the right track and are doing the right things while saving money and still having fun. Comparison is the thief of joy. When it comes to personal finance, one of the most detrimental habits one can fall into is the comparison trap. When you measure your financial situation against others, especially those who are richer, like Elon Musk, it can lead to feeling miserable and frustrated. And social media has made this practice even easier than ever. We're constantly exposed to the highlights of everyone online, whether they went on a vacation, they got engaged, or they just went out for a fancy dinner with friends. It's challenging not to compare your own financial situation when all you see online are just highlights of people, and it's extremely frustrating not to see that you're not there yet. And it's extremely important to remember that this doesn't really show the full situation of these people. Because nowadays it's extremely easy just to pretend. What I mean by this is that now it's extremely easy to rent a jet, take pictures or rent cars and mansions on Airbnb, just to take a couple of videos and portray a lifestyle that you currently don't have. When you compare yourself to others financially, you're just setting yourself up to be miserable. You're focusing on what you don't have rather than on what you have. And this can actually screw up your motivation to improve and get out of your current situation to be better. And even worse, it can lead to even more reckless financial spending just to keep up with the people that you see online, whether they are strangers or even your friends. And moreover, comparing yourself can lead to jealous feelings and just 
keep on comparing, which can get your mindset into a negative mood, which can eventually lead to frustration, which can eventually lead to you spending more money to just not feel yeah, that those feelings of frustration and anger because you're not where you want to be. And there's then a cycle going on where you're just feeling bad, so you spend money and then you spend money because you feel bad. In reality, everyone's financial situation and decisions are different because while well, you might have certain expenses here, they might not have them there. And while you are spending on less on food, they are spending more on food, but you're spending more on rent. So everyone's situation is different and unique. And what works well for one person might actually not work well for you. Or the other way around. The key is to focus on your own personal achievements, your own personal goals and your own personal situation. You'll have to change and adapt. Adapting your mindset and attitude is crucial when trying to save money. It's more than just changing your spending habits, it's more about changing your mentality on how you see spending money. You need to understand that money is more a tool rather than an end on itself. To start you need to believe that you're actually capable of saving money. Whether it's $5 or $500 a month, you are capable of saving a certain amount. Open people get stuck on that feeling of scarcity of I don't have enough, but then don't really do a retrospective thought on why don't I have enough? Where am I going wrong? Is it because I don't earn enough or is it because I'm choosing to spend more than I actually get? And believing that you'll never have enough is actually bad for you and will keep you into that negative loop of not feeling well. And this negative thought can actually be detrimental for your financial situation. So instead, believe that you can save, that you have the ability to save and take a look at your finances and think, where can I save? What I mean here is that you need to understand that saving money is about sacrifices. For example, for this past period, we didn't go out for dinner that often because we focus more on trying to save that amount of money, have that into our bank accounts and cook ourselves, which is cheaper, and instead we didn't go out for dinner. However, we were seeing that our friends were going out for dinner every weekend. And now we have money and they don't. What I mean here is it's about prioritizing where you care that you think that you can save money. Is it a going out for dinner, is it on your rent, is it on spending clothes and you need to make conscious decisions about saving. Changing your mindset means finding cheaper solutions, cutting back on non-essential items like clubbing for example or even just finding creative ways to make extra money. And here's a concept called delayed gratification where you're actually delaying satisfaction instead of getting it now by focusing now on that future feeling. Basically what this means is that today you decide not to go out for dinner, knowing that you will be saving, let's say $100, when in two months you can go out for dinner for $200. Or This means that you allow yourself to delay gratifying yourself for a bigger and more intentional purchase in the future rather than spending today less or getting that dopamine hit today. Define what your do's and don'ts are. Where you can, you save. Defining your do's and don'ts when it comes to saving money is essential for anyone looking to save up some money. It involves setting clear boundaries and guidelines for your spending habits, determining where you can cut back and where you should prioritize your money towards. This clarity not only helps in effectively managing your finances, but also empowers you to make informed decisions that align with your gold term goals. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you choose to spend your money and where you want to save or not. Just be mindful of spending your money in the right way and not going above your means. Identifying your dues involves finding areas in your life where you allow yourself to spend that money, the money that you have and you earn. The way you can do this is by either creating a budget and determining where you want to spend and how much money you want to spend and distinguishing between your needs and your not needs and your wants and also seeking 
different alternatives such as discounts or a cheaper rent or a cheaper car if you're paying for your car monthly. And outlining your don'ts is equally crucial. This just entails selecting things that you will not be spending your money on. And this could be anything from impulse purchases or even dining out every week or ordering food or even just subscriptions like Netflix or Amazon Prime or Disney that perhaps you don't need all of them and you might just want to compromise and choose only one of them. Try and recognize these patterns and establish your own limits. You can then redirect those funds towards saving or investments that yield long-term benefits. Trying to save shouldn't be hard, it should actually be fun and exciting. Saving money is not a sprint but more like a marathon. It's a journey with gradual progress and occasional setbacks.